Hi everyone, it's Chris. Today we're looking at the Samsung 960 EVO solid state disc and the brand new KB Lake Gigabyte Bricks mini PC which features a 7th generation processor from Intel. How well does the 960 EVO perform and will you notice? What are recommended uses for a mini PC and how well does it work? We've been testing for the last week. Let's take a look. Samsung has again upped the ante for SSD performance with their annual product refresh. This year the 250GB Samsung 960 EVO's maximum sequential read speeds climbed to 3200MB per second, up from 2200, while sequential writes reach 1500MB per second, up from 900. The 960 EVO release sets in motion a cost-benefit analysis by tech shoppers everywhere who are eager to reap the benefits of Samsung's blazing new storage sticks, starting at $130. Packaging for the Samsung 960 EVO is minimal. Inside a glossy black cardboard box is a literature pamphlet, a black plastic tray, and an M.2 NVMe SSD. As advertised, we were able to peak at over 3200 megabytes per second for sequential reads while writes topped out at over 1500 megabytes per second using Samsung's magician software. The AJA software was similar for writes but only reached 2400 megabytes per second for reads. For random IOs per second, our figures were both slightly below Samsung's published speeds, but IOPS were superior to the 950 Pro, particularly for random writes which are over 200% higher. In terms of perceived performance, the 960 EVO booted from power off to a login screen in 13 seconds. Battlefront loaded in 51 seconds. For comparison, a Samsung 850 Pro booted in 12 seconds and loaded Battlefront in 62 seconds. The 960 is definitely faster, but its speed advantage is difficult to notice. Overall, the 960 EVO is impressive, but if you blink, you could miss it. Shifting gears to the Gigabyte Bricks, Intel popularized the mini-PC platform with their next unit of computing, simply called the Nook. The mini-PC is a way to tap a new market segment and to capitalize on the success of other small computers like the Mac Mini. Mini-PCs are small, power-efficient, and cheap. Gigabyte says the primary uses of a mini-PC are as a home theater PC, a multimedia hub, an ultra-low power PC for the family, a graphics powerhouse for the latest 3D games, an office PC, or as a digital sign. The price of a mini PC does not include memory or storage, which users must purchase and install separately. Shown here is Gigabyte's Brix GB BKI5HA 7200 mini PC. The white cardboard box itself exhibits high design by featuring a flap that is held closed by magnets. Inside the box we find a Brix mini PC, a Visa plate for optionally mounting the bricks on the rear of your monitor, a 65 watt power supply with cable, and screws. Also included in the box are driver disk media and product literature. The processor is a 7th generation Intel Core i5 operating at 2.5 GHz with turbo boost up to 3.1 GHz. The Brix's graphics are powered by Intel's HD Graphics 620 with simultaneous support for three displays via HDMI and DisplayPort chaining. Wireless networking is from Intel's dual-band wireless AC3168, including Bluetooth 4.2. Audio is Realtek's ALC255. Inside, we find space for two DDR4 SODIMs supporting a maximum of 32GB of memory, a 2880 M.2 storage slot, and a 2.5-inch SATA 3 slot. Up front is a 10 gigabit per second USB 3.1 Type-C port, a second USB 3.1 Type-A port, and a headphone jack with a microphone input. Out back we find one HDMI 2.0 port with HDCP 2.2, one mini display port 1.2 port, two 5 gigabit per second USB 3.0 ports, a gigabit network jack, a power connector, and a Kensington lock. We chose to pair the bricks with two HyperX 8GB memory modules, $115, and a Samsung 960 EVO 250GB SSD, $130. The bricks was $391 for a total system price of $636. 
The Bricks worked well as a home theater PC running Windows 10. We were able to stream YouTube and Netflix at 4K Ultra HD while connected to a 65-inch LG 4K television with HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2. During streaming, thermals were sufficient not to necessitate operation of the Brix's fan with a CPU temperature of 72 degrees Celsius. The Brix's playback was smooth, and its operation was silent. As a lightweight PC, or a basic business PC, the Bricks more than held its own. Geekbench returned a single-core score of 3756 and a multi-core score of 7427. Performance is more than adequate for media consumption and office business applications. To test gaming PC claims, for Star Wars Battlefront using 720p at low settings, we averaged around 30 frames per second of animation performance. CPU thermals reached 88 degrees Celsius, and the CPU throttled down to its base clock of 2.5 gigahertz. Under gaming load, the system fan kicks in, reaching nearly 40 decibels. Battlefront certainly ran, but no surprise, the experience is not one we'd recommend. Since the Brix is based on Intel's Core i-Series mobile processors and BGA packaging, it cannot be upgraded with better CPUs and GPUs. And there's no Thunderbolt 3, meaning there's no provision for external GPUs. And now it's conclusion time. I purchased my first solid-state disk three years ago. Whoa. The resulting performance increase breathed new life into a now eight-year-old PC. Ever since then, I've wanted to relive the moment and watched as SSD performance has exploded. And yet, although the 960 EVO is fantastically fast, I honestly can't perceive the benefit over and beyond the old Samsung 850 Pro. You'd think this will teach me a lesson, but I'm already looking ahead to Intel's Optane. If you're buying new, definitely consider a Samsung 960 EVO or 960 Pro, but don't go out of your way to upgrade. For those on older SSDs, you're not missing much. As far as the bricks, I've personally always wanted a mini PC, but I don't know what to use it for. I use Apple TVs for my home theater systems. When it comes to my Windows PC, I'm a cheapskate, which fits the mini PC, but I want a quad-core processor, discrete graphics expandability, and lower thermals compared to a mini PC, all for less than $636. If you want to play games, want the best value for money with the most future expandability, or plan to create content, then look elsewhere. The Bricks i5-7200 is not for you. Other products offer more performance, more expandability, better value, and or lower thermals. If, on the other hand, you're focused mainly on content consumption, particularly viewing 4K UHD content, if you want a low-energy PC, a basic family or business PC, or if you want or need a small computer above all else, a KB Lake Mini PC is a great choice for you. If you can wait for the release of Intel's 7th generation Nook coming in March, we'd recommend the i5 Nook 7 over the bricks. The i5 Nook 7 features Iris Pro 640 graphics, a Thunderbolt 3 port, and is Intel Optane ready, all features that the bricks lacks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like or subscribe and leave comments below. And so long until next time. Thank you.